right. Welcome back. Now let's talk about uh, matters uh, economy and politics today on The Viewpoint. Let's talk about post-election economic recovery, something that touches every person's life. And uh, when you talk about shilling, basically you're talking about everyone's life. So today I have got two gentlemen. I'm expecting CEO of uh, Jijenga Credit Limited who will be joining us shortly but in studio I have got engineer Victor Okuna who is um, or let me start with Rufus Kamau who is a lead markets analyst at FX Pesa. Uh, next to me I have uh, engineer Victor Okuna who is an energy expert. Gentlemen, welcome to the studio. You. When you talk about money um, I know it touches both of you. Yeah. How does it touch you? Starting with you, uh, Victor. Uh, um, I'm Victor Kuna, as uh, just you've introduced, mm -hmm. uh, energy experts. And also, maybe you didn't say, I also ran for Senate in Migori County. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. All right. Congratulations. You, uh, <laughs> you, I, um, you had a race. Uh, yeah, I had All a right. race, but I did make it. Mm -hmm. So I'm back to the normal business. No problem, Karibu. So uh, the business you are doing is about the re uh, renewable energy. Mm. And we talk of renewable energy is about uh, uh, the buying and selling of uh, renewable products yes. like solar. Mm -hmm. So any adjustments on uh, on the products is costly, especially to us, the constructors. Mm. So we really want a case where we also check the cost of fuel and also the cost of the renewable energy. Is this sustainable mm. to the economy that we are in? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We'll get to the details on. Uh, uh, matters to do with renewable, renewable energy, which is quite important as well. But Rufus, um, let's talk about matters economy. What is the state of economy, generally speaking, after an election? We are still moving, you know, from the remnants of, of politics. Uh, Kenyans are still getting used to the norm, as we speak. But what is generally the state of economy? Uh, uh, thank you for the question. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, personally, I've been. Uh, working as an analyst mm. so uh, our main focus has been uh, on investments and uh, how you can uh, diversify yeah. uh, look for opportunities where you can uh, build yourself individually mm. or as a corporate so um, when i look at the kenyan economy and uh, what we've gone through especially during the covid 19 period yes i would still say we are in a recovery uh, it's a difficult task when uh, things were just starting to shape up. Mm. We experienced now the elections. There was a lot of slowdown in business. But now, after the peaceful elections, uh, we are starting to see things shape up. Yeah. However, a lot more is dependent on uh, the incumbent uh, administration. Mm. So whatever policies they implement will be very instrumental in the direction that the economy takes. Mm. So as for now, if you look at uh, what we have, uh, interest rates so far so good. The central bank has maintained low rates mm. since COVID. Mm. Seven percent uh, recently uh, spiked to seven point five percent. But uh, inflation is becoming a big concern, mm. especially currently starting at eight point five percent. So consumer prices have been going up. Uh, they are weighing up, especially on consumer budgets. Yeah. So right now, I think uh, it's a big, big challenge to the new government to address the rising And of course, inflation. that has a spiral effect to the common monainchi. Yes. So it's, it's, how long is it going to be? Um, hard to tell. Uh, if you look at the cost of this inflation, mm. uh, majorly uh, the rising commodity prices, mm -hmm. uh, it's global. So if you look at uh, oil, has been going up yeah. for the last two years. Uh, the lowest prices we saw was uh, around April 2020. Yeah. Uh, since then, the general curve has been going up, say, for the last one or two months. Mm. So as uh, you look at the geopolitical situation in uh, Russia, Ukraine, uh, it, it's causing a lot of uh, shortages in terms of uh, supply side to oil. Mm -hmm. And this is affecting global demand. Yeah. So it, we are not just the ones experiencing shortages in terms of uh, energy, mm. uh, that is petroleum. Uh, it's happening globally and it's also affecting our products. Yeah. So being a net importer, if a company, uh, wh whether it's located in China, whether it's located in Europe or the US, mm. is experiencing higher energy costs, that cost uh, is pushed forward to the product. Mm. So when that product lands in Kenya, it already comes as imported inflation and uh, it's weighing on the common warranty where they have to spend more on the consumer products. You know, you know what you've just raised? Um, perhaps I would say that a layman might not understand 
how the fuel prices will go up, you know, the cost that the government will incur, mm -hmm. that, you know, at the end of the day will also have that impact on the common monainchi, the final uh, the consumer. Right now we are retailing at 179 shillings, you know, in Nairobi. But a common monainchi will say, government, but they don't know uh, the geosocial, whatever you're talking about in Ukraine and Russia, that has a spiral effect. But you, as an energy expert, how bad is the situation? Uh, on the matters of energy, the, uh, the prices is too high mm. for the common monange. Why? Because if you take, for example, the cost of diesel is around 160, 164. Mm. Uh, if you want to produce, let's say, tomatoes, you want to irrigate using uh, diesel or petrol, you mm. want to plow, you want to till, you want to transport it, then by the end of the day, you won't have any meaningful profit. Yes. So the cost of energy at the moment is not favorable for any kind of uh, agricultural production. Even if it is just sugarcane plantation, because mm. I come from the sugarcane plantation, when you start with plowing, tilling, uh, and doing all the all the rest until mm. you transport it to the to the uh, to the uh, factory. Mm. Then the cost of production you've used. They always say that energy costs around thirty to forty percent. But where we are currently, energy costs around sixty to seventy percent of the cost of production. So definitely, there are, we had a subsidy, which uh, was uh, lifted by the president, the mm. incoming president. Mm -hmm. I think that was in goodwill because people have really misused it. Yes. You find that there is a subsidy of uh, a, a certain percentage, mm. but this subsidy goes into some few individuals. Uh, what happens to, co uh, to uh, fuel? Mm. Fuel is under a market called og oligopolistic market. Mm -hmm. Oligop oligopoly means it is a market that only has very few uh, traders, not everyone. Mm. We, we call it the downstream. So for you to transport fuel from uh, Saudi Arabia to here, there are very few uh, companies that are doing that. So we call them oligopoly markets. Mm -hmm. So you cannot really go and start your own farm to do that. So these few companies now came in and took the space in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So when you give them some percentage in subsidy, then some, a good percentage goes into them through the cartels. Mm -hmm. So when the president looked at this and said, no, we cannot keep on giving subsidy that is not really affecting the Kenyans. Yeah. It is part of it or a chunk of it is going directly to the pockets of few cartels in Kenya. So that is why the subsidy was lifted. But as an energy expert, I think uh, there are several taxes that should be actually lifted mm. from this energy fuel. In a liter, you get uh, almost 60, sh uh, 60 shillings mm. of, of levies. So instead of house having uh, subsidy, why can't you remove the sub subsidy, then you reduce the, uh, the fuel levies from the diesel up to a point where we have now the balance. Okay. And actually, when he was talking about the markets, uh, I'm a business person and I also read business. There's something we call uh, kink demand curve mm. is in business. Kink demand curve is where two markets are coming, the, 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 the demand and mm. the supply. Mm. So where you have a point of, uh, where, where they meet is where the demand, uh, the, the, the demand of the people mm. is almost now equivalent to the market. Mm. So we need to have a, a point where the cost of diesel will be favorable mm. to even those uh, farmers, the hustlers down there using the diesel to do their own agricultural activities. Yes. Otherwise, at the moment, where I am sitting, the cost of uh, fuel is quite high for any substantial okay. farming to take place. You know, you know when you talk about fuel, um, we all know, when, when you touch on fuel, general energy, yeah. everyone and everybody will feel that effect. Yes. So the government was proposing to have that subsidy or to, reg to regulate the cost of fuel um, in the country. Yes. How will the government regulate it without affecting the cost of importation, all right, as well as not interfering with the subsidy? So that from 179, let me start by saying, is there a point that the cost of fuel will come down? From 179, let's say to 140. Is yes. it possible? Yes, it's possible. Actually, Victor, if you look at the cost, the landing cost of, of, of uh, super, yes. it went down by 23 
percent. So the fuel has actually went down from uh, July to August. Mm. The fuel went down by 23 percent. But it kept on increasing. But it kept on increasing. That one means that we had too much subsidy. So when the subsidy was removed, then the fuel was supposed to go too high. Mm. Then because the fuel, the landing cost also went down, mm -hmm. we didn't feel that much high. Otherwise, we could have been having fuel at around more than 211 shillings. Mm -hmm. So the, the landing cost of fuel at Mombasa actually went down. Petrol went down by around 23 percent. Yes. And then diesel went around between uh, 10 and 20. So there was total, I mean, there was overall fuel decrease, uh, the, fuel, uh, the fuel cost decreased. Mm -hmm. But because we had too much uh, subsidy on them, we removed the subsidy. Then even if you remove the, uh, the subsidy, the fuel prices still went high because if, uh, the subsidy was more than okay. the amount of, uh, amount of reduction right. of fuel at okay. the landing cost. I'll come back to that issue of subsidy because it seems that a majority of Kenyans do not understand mm -hmm. the real importance of having a subsidy or removing it yes, in totality. Yeah, it's true. I'll come back to that. But Rufus, how bad was um, economy during election, during the campaign period? Let me, let's just give it a period of six months. How bad was it that now we can still have a spillover to post-election? Um, when it comes to the economy and we, uh, when we like, weigh the, entire, uh, the economy in its entirety, mm. um, we, we kind of lose the direction because some, uh, some parts mm. uh, tend to be consistent. For instance, yes. if, you are, if you are farming, uh, you don't slow down on your farming because there's elections. Mm. But then when you look at uh, some other stuff, especially the things like uh, manufacturing, uh, you're not sure about the demand that is going to be there over the next one, two months, especially when you're expecting an election. Yeah. So in that case, you'll find that businesses will tend to slow down as they weigh the situation. Mm. So uh, the business expectations tend to go down uh, as a result of the history we have had in previous elections. So what we experienced is that uh, foreign investors were withdrawing mm. a lot of uh, the investments, uh, looking to just stay safe for a period, not knowing what will happen. Yeah. And then after the elections, then if things are good, then they come back. So with that withdrawal, uh, there was less capital. Uh, also, if you look at the lending side, mm. um, if let's say you want a loan, uh, you want to invest in some business. Bank or business assistant? Yes, the, the, the bank will not be uh, very positive about it. Yes. And they are not sure about the uh, next couple of months. Mm. So business really slowed down, especially in terms of production and also financing. Mm. So took a, uh, we took a big hit uh, in terms of our job creation in the market. Uh, it was slowing down, economic production was slowing down. And uh, this led to the current situation that we have. Uh -huh. We are now we are starting to see as if we are growing, but in actual sense we are recovering from what you are not doing. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's take a break. When we come back, I still want us to talk about the issue of politics and economy. How are these two people connected, or can we separate them so that at the end of the day, politics will take its center stage and economy will also grow without being hindered by politics or whichever the case may be. Let's take a break, gentlemen. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back in studio. I have um, two gentlemen, engineer Victor Kuna and Rufus Kamau, helping me to understand and you to understand what economy has in store for us after the politics. So, uh, Rufus, let me just understand this. How do you connect politics and economy? Um, when it comes to the economy, uh, especially uh, our Kenyan economy, mm. Uh, there are key drivers, uh, the people, uh, the workers like you, you and me. Uh, we do all the work when it comes to doing, providing services, production, the farmer, the drivers, uh, and so on. But then there are those economic policies that are implemented that affect the worker directly. So uh, if, let's say, you are a farmer, uh, you need financing, uh, there are those people in the administration 
that will make policies that affect your access to finance. Uh, for instance, uh, we have had several policies affecting, uh, for instance, the CRB, uh, interest rates uh, mm. from the central bank, uh, and all that. So if the systems are not working and they are run by politicians, then they affect the worker directly. Yeah. So the policies that are being implemented by the administration, the legislature, they eventually influence the economy. Mm. So there is a direct relationship between the two. Okay. Yes. Victor, you talked about the issue of subsidy and um, perhaps for the sake of understanding the whole aspect, first of all, what is subsidy? Uh, uh, thanks, uh, Victor. Because it's been talked over, you know, from I don't know how many months ago we are doing this and that, and that this and that. And some people took it that it was a political statement. Uh. But economically speaking, what is it all about for the sake of common I mean, to understand? So uh, subsidy, uh, Vic, is uh, money you allocate somewhere to caution, uh, to caution residents. Yes. So if I'm selling maybe uh, unga at 100 shillings, uh, because of tough economic conditions, I can decide that I give you a discount of 20 shillings. So these 20 shillings, I'm the one who pays out to the, uh, to the companies. Mm. So the government now comes in with some money then they give to the fuel marketers. Yeah. So the fuel marketers brings in fuel. Let's say if the landing cost is 100 shillings per litre, and because of the tough economic uh, times we are in, mm -hmm. the government comes in and tells the marketers, sell the fuel at 80 shillings. The difference of 20 shillings we will cut off. So that is the, exactly what the fuel subsidy is. Mm. So the fuel is supposed to be sold at uh, like 100, uh, 211 shillings at the moment. Mm. But because of that high cost, the government comes in or chips in, brings in some money to the marketers and tell them, no, this, uh, the prices is too high. Kindly sell the fuel at around um, 179. So the rest of the difference, now the government sets in. So that is exactly what we call a subsidy. So uh, from IPRA, uh, IPRA website, they, they, they get in some values here, the amount of the, the landing cost, in July, actually, the super, uh, super petrol mm. was 1,074.01, that is uh, US dollars per cubic uh, meters. Mm. Then in August 2022, it is 811. So therefore means that the landing cost actually, what I was saying before, mm. has actually gone down in the, uh, in, in the universe. So uh, the, the, change, uh, the change, the decrease is 24.31. So maybe in the near future, we may expect to see more uh, decline in fuel prices. And then the diesel went down by 13.90 mm. from 1,103 to 949.68 uh, US dollars mm. per cubic meters. So from what we are seeing today, it therefore means that maybe, we are, not, uh, we are only speculative that maybe, from the next month or next uh, months be uh, coming, we may start to see uh, fuel prices going down. Mm. But I want to say something. Uh, today we are observing the International Peace Day. Yes. That is very important. Why? Because the Ukraine uh, and, and the Russian war has really made every prices to go down, uh, to go up. Exactly. Almost so, globally. Yes. So the moment we have a peace deal. Mm then we'll start to see prices of very many commodities coming down. Okay. So we are only praying that the president, uh, President Ruto, uh, as our president now, they're having the, uh, the meeting in the U.S. today, mm. the 77th, let them sit down and argue out the differences between uh, Ukraine mm. and Russia so that we can have stabilization of especially the fuel prices. Okay. The moment we have a stable fuel, then we'll have the economy that is more favorable to common monainchi, so to a hustler like me and also a hustler like someone <laughs> when you go to there. And he's just calling himself a hustler. I'm just wondering you know, <laughs> how, what Rufus will call himself. Okay, Rufus, is there hope for, for, for us as a nation? Because now people are still struggling to, you know, get post-election, uh, past the election period now, uh, economy is trying, trying to, you know, people are trying to get somehow getting used to the situation many people decided to go back to the village because of you know the fears and what have you yes. but is there hope uh, yes there's hope um, 
when you look at the economic model mm. uh, practiced by the previous administration, was well, as the current one, yes, uh, it seems like we are having a big shift. Um, if you look at the fuel subsidy uh, that you are having, the UNGA subsidy, uh, by removing that, uh, they are not just removing, they are actually repurposing the subsidy. Mm. So we know that the government doesn't do production. So uh, it cannot easily fix supply. Yeah. So if there's a shortage of fuel and prices are going up, the government doesn't have some fuel aside that it can add to the market. So it had, has been uh, just pushing more money uh, to try and make sure that the prices remain low mm. and uh, people are able now to spend on other things. So when you look at the current economic model, they're trying to stimulate the supply side to yes. make sure that the production is uh, going up from the working people. And uh, from there, you'll see the fruits of that going up. Mm. So, rather than having a lot and, of... And there is a danger to that. Yes. I, I, I tend to think there's a danger to that. What if yeah. the, final, the final result is not uh, positive? Yes, uh, absolutely. Yes, there is a risk to that. Yes. So, when you look at uh, what they are doing by pumping more money towards, uh, let's say, subsidizing fertilizer mm. uh, versus uh, subsidizing fuel, uh, you realize that they tend to boost production. And um, if you boost production, mm. let's say uh, the farmer has access to uh, low-cost fertilizer, mm. and then they expand their production, uh, let's say, for the next one season, then it seems like uh, one season down the line, we'll have more food. Mm. And if this farmer has excess output, uh, they'll have some output to sell, and they'll have some cash to afford fuel. Yeah. You see? Yes. So for now, between now and the next season, uh, the economy will really suffer. We will be experiencing higher prices in, uh, let's say, uh, unga, higher mm. prices in uh, petrol. But let's say one season or one production uh, cycle mm. down the line, then people will have money in their pockets in order to afford these high products. Mm. Yeah. So it's, it's, a to, uh, it's a totally different model, but then it has to like induce pain before you start seeing the rewards. Induced pain? <laughs> yes. <laughs> because at the end of the day, Kenyans are looking for some reprieve. But when you talk about induced pain, does it mean that you'll have to be a bit, you know, more patient for us to enjoy the, the outcome? R Rufa, uh, Victor? Uh, yeah, we'll have to be patient. But uh, uh, Vic, when we talk of the prices, mm. especially of well that is now the, 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 the elephant in the room, yeah. I think we now look, we need to look at the modalities on how to for go about fuel mm. and uh, as an energy expert and also renewable energy engineer mm. it is now high time for the president Ruto and the entire government to come up with modalities and now they, uh, we can introduce electric cars to this country why when you talk of supply and demand mm. when the supply is high the cost always goes high mm -hmm. So the demand has, I mean, when you talk of demand, when demand has fuel, of fuel has gone exceedingly high, mm. the number of cars coming into the country is quite, there are very many per day. Mm. The only way that we can really avoid these mishaps in future is to ensure that we come up with policies that ensure that we uh, go in green cars. Mm. In other countries, they have, they have put a, a timeline that by 2030, I was reading an, an article that in the U.S. there's a state, by 2030, all vehicles to be in that state yeah. should either be hybrid or electric. Why? Because hybrid cars consume less energy, mm -hmm. or less fuel, and electric cars consume zero fuel. Mm. So we actually, when we really want to sort out the issue of fuels on the demand and supply, then let us work on the modalities of ensuring that in the near future, yeah. Even if it is five to ten years, this government should come up with clear policies that puts a framework that by this, by the end of this year, yes. then we should have only either hybrid cars and electric cars being imported to this country. That one we will have sorted out the issue of wells mm -hmm. because now we will have less uh, less demand. The moment you have less demand to fuel, even in the, in, in the, in the, in the, in the market abroad, mm. the moment we have less demand on fuel, then their prices go down. You remember in 2020, actually the barrel of fuel went to 30, 30, 30, it was around 30, uh, 30 US, uh, US, US dollars mm. per barrel. Mm. Why? Because the demand was too low and the supply was too high. 
For us to really get there, then we really need to get in a position where a good percentage, mm. even if it is 30% of our cars in between in, on our roads, mm. are actually using electric cars. And the first thing that mm. we need to do, mm -hmm. our governors, our governors should ensure that the cars they're actually importing are purely electric. Why? Because the cars the governors are using within the county, they go maximum of 100 kilometers. So they can be charged overnight on the, at the yards of the governor, uh, on, the gov on the governors. The following day, they wake up, they go do their errands, and then come back. Mm -hmm. So we really need to see uh, heads rolling. We need to see policies and frameworks that will ensure that this country goes green yeah. and especially on the transport when sector. When you talk about the transport sector and the introduction of electric cars and hybrid cars, that will also call on the production aspect. I mean, the infrastructural bit of it. Uh, we see the BRT still yes. struggling in Nairobi. We are not yet <laughs> ready to heat it running, but because of the infrastructure. But actually, I can say that they, uh, in Kenya we, we already have electric cars, so it's not a new thing. Actually, yes. in uh, Cabanas here, mm. there's a company that converts these uh, gasoline engines to electric cars mm. and you charge them. Mm. There's nothing big in electric cars. It's just a, a, a lithium batteries mm. that are need to be charged on high, high current. So when you talk of electric cars, it's not a huge, it's huge... about the perception no, that it's, it's, it's a perception. But Somebody will say, if, if, uh, uh, No, 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 no. You if, what I'm saying? If a, a good yes. electric car yeah. will give you uh, 300 miles, mm. 300 miles is almost 580 kilometers. Mm. So what, why we need the counties to, first of all, introduce the electric cars is because every county will now have the charging points. Mm. So when you leave Nairobi, maybe you're going to Mombasa, then you can leave here up to Mtitande, then you charge your car, rest there for 30 minutes because there are heavy charges. Yeah. So a heavy charge means that within 20 minutes, you have already injected an, uh, almost 10 to 20 then kilowatt hours. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm really, I'm really uh, up to the, uh, to the uh, national government mm. to come with policies and ensure that they in talk with the county government to abolish the import importation of gasoline. Mm. I can assure you the fuel now is 179 shillings. Our, our, our counties will be buying this fuel of, of 179 at almost 300 okay. shillings. I'll, st I'll still have that question back to you yeah. uh, as an energy expert. Whether we have some projection at some point that Kenyans will still enjoy um, a lower fuel price. I'm, I'm, I'm just praying, you know, uh, I'll, and you give me the possibilities of that happening. but. When you look at the economy so far, uh, uh, Rufus, the SME is really struggling to get that stability they need right now. Uh, what would cushion them as we speak? Uh, we have the Hustler Fund that the President talked about. Yes. Um, that will have to go through some legislative processes for it to be uh, dispersed to the, to the relevant uh, consumers. But the SMEs, who are the biggest contributors in the economy, what can be done with an immediate effect to just to uplift them so that at the end of the day we have got some good living? Um, good, good question here. Um, when you look at the SMEs, mm. uh, over the past, let's say, 10 years, uh, the last two, uh, the last one administration, yeah. tenor, we have had a big, big challenge. And uh, the challenge is clear. It's state capture, mm. uh, where the persons at the top uh, capture all the resources that are um, instrumental to building capital. Mm. So uh, when you look at the SMEs and what they really need, uh, it's a couple of things. Uh, one, uh, for instance, if you look at the Millennium Development Goals, uh, you look at the Vision 2030, it's anchored a, a, around a couple of things. Yeah. First is uh, infrastructure. Uh, we saw infrastructure being implemented very well. Uh, we have a wide network of roads, so distribution channels are working really well. Mm. Uh, our telecommunication networks are working well. If you look at Safaricom, it uh, has a big, big reach uh, to any part of the country. Mm. Uh, then when you look at financing, uh, that's where our real challenge is. Uh, previously, we had uh, the rate caps. Uh, the rate caps were really tough. The uh, commercial banks couldn't lend to the SMEs. Mm. Uh, then we saw another big monster happening within the country. Where the, the government had more appetite for debt compared to the SMEs. Yeah. So uh, there's uh, money 
that's, uh, everything is funded by savings. So there's money lying around in savings, but the government wants this money more than the SMEs and more than the people. So you find that commercial banks would lend more to the uh, government, and this was at uh, some good good rates, 12.5% uh, in the uh, last infrastructure bond. Yeah. So why would the government give you, uh, Victor, a loan at 14%, considering the risk in the market mm -hmm. versus giving uh, that money to the government. Yes. So you found that commercial banks were lending more money to the government, crowding out the SMEs. So the SMEs will not have access to finance. Yeah. Yeah. So... I, I continue, yes. Yeah. So that was one part of the problem you're having in this country. Mm. So these SMEs were forced to operate within lower tier financial institutions. Mm. So instead of going to a commercial bank, they would probably go to a SACO, where they would organize themselves. Mm. And if you, you have savings, here are savings, then we pull them together and then the SACO gives that as a loan to one of the uh, contributors. Yes. So in that case, they would have some level of financing, but still that wasn't enough because if um, uh, the SACO is lending from a pool, then it means that once one person gets a loan, then you don't get the loan until I, I repay. Yes. Yeah. So, if, so, so which means that really affected the lending rates uh, at the commercial banks? Yes. So down the line, uh -huh. you realize that uh, now that that's, uh, the middle tire is not workable, mm. then the SMEs and the people were forced now to move on to the mobile apps. Mm. And the mobile apps were largely unregulated, uh, offering very high interest rates. Mm. I would call them interest rates uh, it's more or less like theft like uh, the, uh, the rates are too high mm. okay so uh, you realize that uh, they are not sustainable it's not something you can work with to build a business mm. so if you get let's say a mobile app where you let's say get 20 100k within an instant but the interest rates are too high and the repayment term is too short yes uh, one like two, one month one, yeah some, some are even two weeks yes yes uh, that cannot be sustainable, cannot be used to grow or develop SMEs. Mm. So the real solution we need is low interest rates. So if SMEs can uh, access loans at low interest rates, uh, that could be, let's say, the commercial bank rates, mm. uh, the same rates that Safaricom is getting from the commercial banks, mm. that would work. And the other function is uh, the long-term nature of the loans. So if you get a loan, let's say, to bootstrap your business, and uh, they need you to repay in the next one, two, three months, mm -hmm. then that's not sustainable. We have seen it happen with uh, the lenders who are lending for mobile car loans. They lend you a uh, one-year loan, and then within a very short period of time, you're, you're unable to pay for one, two months, and very fast they reclaim your car. So mm -hmm. it has been happening all over the country. If you look at the newspapers, most of the pages are just reselling cars. Okay. Yes. So in order for, for us to have some sustainable development in SMEs, then we need some longer term loans that allows the flexibility yeah, to grow. Yeah. Yeah. Spread. Yeah. So how creative can Kenyans be? Because at this particular point, um, yes. it seems that going to the bank, you'll have to hire, you know, have some high interest rate, of course, yes. and some repayment period is slightly shorter. Yes. How can Kenyans be at this particular point so that at the end of the day, before you go to a bank or any financial institution to get a loan, then uh, you can still have your business up and running. Victor. <laughs> uh, uh, to me, on actually what my brother said, mm. on the loans on SMEs, mm -hmm. uh, the loans currently by the banks are quite high. Actually, if you're doing a business and the level of business that we have currently is not uh, sustainable, mm. I'd wish a, co a, a condition where the government really partner with circles. Yes to ensure that circles give uh, soft loans uh, to our to our SMEs. Mm. Why? Because circles gives uh, loans at uh, almost a low, low, uh, low rates. Mm. So for really uh, SMEs to have meaningful business with returns, then the government uh, through circles, I think we have circle departments, mm. should really encourage Kenyans to form circles so that we can take loans. I'm a business person, I'm an engineer, but doing my own business. Mm. And I think circles have really uh, made me to do business. Is a circle you can take uh, a million for a million for business, mm. then you return the money within uh, three months and you pay them uh, 30,000, yeah. 30,000, yeah. uh, 1%. So mm. for really uh, SMEs in this country to have meaningful business, then we really need to either have partnership between the circles and the government to give them some money 
then the SMEs can take uh, loans at a lower rate from the circles mm. for us to be uh, really to boost our business. Then. Uh, the only challenge that we have with circles is the issue of guarantees. It's a problem to because sometimes you don't have a guarantee yeah. and you need, you need three guarantees. So if the government wants to really uh, boost the circles, the, I mean the SMEs, then they also need to talk to the circles to really review this issue of guarantees. It's either the government or anyone any, or anybody mm. to really be the guarantees of these SMEs, so that in case of this there's, there's a default, then mm. that body should now really come into uh, into action and really see what is really uh, what's happening mm. with this person who has not paid or repaid his loan. But mm. the best thing for us to really have meaningful business for the SMEs, then we need to have the circle side or then we need to have a, a, an organization that can give circles a loan that equivalent to the to the to the circles, mm. so that when you have a, a loan for six months, you don't pay the heavy heavy deals or the heavy uh, the heavy money that the current banks are yeah. really are really paying. Mm. Yeah. Rufus, how, how how creative can we get as a nation? Um, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to mention uh, as a. FX Pesa, mm. uh, working with a regulated financial markets broker in Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, we are big, big in terms of uh, financial literacy. So we are doing all these programs where we are educating uh, people about investing, mm. uh, understanding personal finance and where they can invest, especially considering the current environment of uh, uh, lack of access to capital and also the high interest rates, uh, high inflation and all that. Mm. So. In terms of getting creative, uh, there's a couple of things. Uh, I've seen a lot of uh, young investors who are looking to go for offshore investments mm. uh, in order to caution themselves from uh, the shilling. So if, for instance, um, you're looking at, uh, let's say, investing in the stock market, mm. uh, you realize that uh, if you invest in um, the Kenyan stock market, uh, we have under 100 companies trading in the Nairobi Securities Exchange. And uh, to be honest, the uh, like top top companies that are doing really well, yeah. they're under ten. Mm. Uh, most of these other guys are struggling. So, if you widen the net and you look at uh, other companies like top top global companies that are doing well in the uh, in the world, then you have the opportunity through innovation, financial mm. innovation, where you can buy these assets and hold them uh, simply by the click of a button from your phone. Mm. So it makes it simpler for you to, let's say, have a retirement fund uh, invested in an asset that is, uh, let's say, dollar backed, mm. rather than Kenya shilling banked. Um, it also gives you the forex advantage. Uh, let me make it simpler. If you look at uh, the exchange rate between the Kenya shilling and the dollar, yes. at the beginning of the pandemic, January 2020, we were around 100 shillings per dollar. Mm. Right now, as we speak, it's 120 per dollar. Mm. So let's say at the beginning of the pandemic, we realized all oh, things are doing bad. Let me do some investments in a couple of uh, foreign companies. And uh, you did that at 100. So for every dollar, you are buying at 100. So right now, if you, let's say, made some good returns mm -hmm. over the period of two years, and now you decide to reinvest back in Kenya, when you're converting back your profits, now you're doing it at 120. Mm. So you are shielded from that level of uh, depreciation of the currency against the dollar. Mm. So that's one of the creative ways I've seen Kenya, Kenyans do in terms of uh, addressing... But that is just current. a chosen few. I'm talking about uh, yes. uh, my kinsmen back in the village. Yes. They're talking about forex exchange and having offshore accounts and what have you. Yes. Um, just to so, push on the SME. Yes. So these... There's no like one single solution uh, yeah. that fits all. Uh, for instance, I had written an article that was yesterday on the Business Daily mm. uh, about uh, hedging your investments via the futures market. Mm. So for instance, if you're, let's say you're a coffee farmer, mm. uh, you produce coffee, and then you, let's say, sell in the, uh, in the market, uh, you realize that uh, coffee prices can be very volatile. So by the time you're planting, and mm. let's say you're trying to get a loan from a bank to scale up your operations, uh, you are unsure of where you're going to sell, uh, sorry, you are unsure of the price you're going to sell at. Mm. So you can lock in a price now be, for the coffee that you're going to harvest okay. six, uh, eight months, mm. or even one year down the line. Mm -hmm. So you can use the financial markets to lock in through the futures market, and uh, that 
benefits you mm. with, uh, by giving you a specific price that you're mm. going to sell. Okay, L yeah. let's, let's take a break. Yeah. When you come back, you talked about the issue of credit yes. and how credit we can get and talk about circles and uh, credit institutions. Yeah, coming, joining us shortly is Peter Mashera, who is the CEO of Jijenge Credit Limited. He's going to tell us how we can get credit from Jijenge Credit Limited from here. Yes. Without Good. being given high yeah. <laughs> interest rates. No, right? Awesome. Good. Okay, Thank let's you. take a break. We'll be right back with more. I'm now joined in studio by uh, Peter Mashare, who is the CEO of the Jenga Credit Limited. We are bringing him on board so that we can understand how can a common monainchi access credit and just the literacy bit of it on how we can spur our economy as a nation just from, from, the, from the elections. Mr. Mashare, welcome to the program. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Karibu sana. Um, the same question I, I started with them. How bad is the economy from your own perspective as a CEO uh, running an institution? How bad is the economy? I'll quote uh, what the governor said. Mm. I think two days, two days ago when he was uh, talking to the National Assembly members, he said the economy is uh, not bad, the finances are not bad. Quote, uh, the challenge that they are facing is that uh, we are living beyond our means. Mm. Whatever we are collecting is almost what is being uh, spent to pay salaries and uh, meet uh, development and other recurrent expenditure. Mm -hmm. So ideally, we just need to reorganize our finances because one, a government is not supposed to keep money in, in savings and mm. maybe projects or salaries or other expenditure is not paid. We should then we should uh, enhance projects or organizations or corporates like NSSF and encourage Kenyans to save more. If you are saving 200, you can now save 1,000. Mm. But in terms of uh, the government uh, account at CBK, it, it should, it's, it's like a current account. It should not be having money lying idle. Mm. And maybe in the northern part of Kenya, cows need water. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm quite interested in understanding how how the commercial banks, mm -hmm. whether commercial banks in Kenya mm -hmm. can easily sustain our economy. Leave alone borrowing, the, mm -hmm. the, the foreign uh, borrowing that you are getting from the IMF, mm -hmm. from the World Bank, and mm -hmm. what have you been from other jurisdictions. Yes, yes. Can we sustain our, our, our economy? Yes, we can sustain our economy. How possible? It's very possible by number one, make sh making sure that all state corporations, mm. including yourselves here, <laughs> <laughs> operate, yes. operate on a commercial basis. Uh -huh. What I mean by that is that uh, you should be generating some profit. You see the challenges we've been facing with the KQ. Mm. It's a state, corp it's a state uh, corporation. It, it never, it, it, we are, the government is always supporting it. Mm. As opposed Bailing to out. it, yeah. yeah. As, as opposed to it, carrying passengers, goods, and maybe parcels to generate an income, and at the end of the year they do a check to the exchequer. Mm. So it's, it's, a, it's a culture that needs to be cascaded down even to the counties. A county like Turukana should mm. identify maybe a resource or some uh, activities that it as a county can operate without extending its hand to the national treasury for funding, mm. yes. Okay. We need to put all organizations as profit centers. Yes. Yeah, and uh, the economy will thrive, mm. yes. Rufus, what do you think? Um, I think, yes, uh, we, we, we can manage. Mm. Uh, we, we just have to restructure the kind of policies that we implement. Yes. And uh, make sure that the investments are from the bottom towards the upper side. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, for instance, if you look at the financial access, uh, for big, big corporations, they are able to access finance, but the common monarchy is not accessing finance. Mm. Um, big, big corporations are getting finance at uh, low interest rates. Uh, the common monarchy is getting finance at very high interest rates. Yes. So if you kind of reverse that function, 
then we would be seeing ourselves moving in the right direction. Mm. So uh, focusing on uh, the base inputs uh, or the base factors of production, uh, especially electricity. Electricity is uh, currently very high. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at fuel, uh, one of the reasons uh, that fuel is very expensive is not actually the international markets, mm. but it's the KRA have being over reliant on uh, the tax that it collects from uh, fuel. Mm -hmm. So when uh, we see a lot of uh, over reliance on this product, which is a base product, if you do want to do any production in this country, you need energy. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when we see that kind of over reliance, then it weighs down on the producer, the bottom level. So if we kind of reduce these uh, base products or the cost of these base products, like yes. fertilizer, we address the cost of electricity, transport, then we'll start seeing ourselves moving in the right direction. Okay. Victor, why is the cost of electricity so high? Somebody would say um, they bought a token worth 500 shillings. They got 31, I think, a few weeks ago. And right now it's gone to around... 25 also? Uh, 22. 22? Yeah. Why that sudden change? Uh, Vic, you know we generate free power. Actually, uh, the power generated from Kindaruma, the Seven Fox, mm -hmm. and also the Geothermal, they are free power actually. Mm -hmm. The only cost that is there is the losses. When you transport power from Kenjian to Thika uh, substation, yes. there are some losses that, they are, okay, they are not much. But the inefficiencies at Kenya Power is why we see the high cost of power. So the, the common you know, is actually the, the, the common is at the, yeah, at the headquarters. And let me uh, let me just explain this. Yes. When you go to Kenya, uh, KPLC yard, the substation or yard, even office, even a new one, six months, you'll find faulty transformers there. Just six months or even one year, you'll find a heap of transformers on the grass. They are faulty. Why? One, Kenya Power uh, in, uh, think they procure substandard uh, transformers. So you go install it there, the rare. You, now, as we speak, every village mm. has a faulty transformer that was installed by rare. Even in my village, back in Migori there, I've been to Riri, I've been to uh, Ntimaru, mm. there are several transformers that are, are faulty. They are faulty because they cannot really maintain the quality standards of, of or the quality uh, parameters that a transformer should be. Then two, the rogue technicians. You know, you can find a trans, uh, I mean Kenya Power installing for you a meter today. Then next year, the same same Kenya Power comes to you and tell you that this meter mm is not supposed to be here. It's, not it's supposed, yeah, it's supposed to be in Wajia. Yeah. When the same same meters were installed by the workers and the contractors of Kenya Power. Mm. So why Kenyans are paying, uh, are paying um, uh, so much tariffs is because of the inefficiencies in Kenya Power. I can assure you that the cost of maintenance of Kenya Power, buying a transformer, uh, replacing it, those costs are transferred yeah. to, the to, uh, to the final consumer. Mm. So the moment we will have a government that can have a very efficient, a very efficient Kenya power with very low illegal connections, and can, I can assure you we lose almost, was it more than a one giga, uh, giga, giga, gigawatts on power through illegal connections, where someone is uh, went and uh, tap power from the from the poles mm. and distributed to the whole estate and is not paying. Mm. All those costs are transferred to the uh, final uh, final customer. Okay. Then mm -hmm. the last thing you remember, we still use a uh, kipev is still a geothermal. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still a thermal. Mm -hmm. So we are still producing electricity using uh, fuel. I really don't understand why Kenya has a lot of sun. We can actually we can even do uh, two gigawatts of sun of, of solar power, but we still have to manage Kipevu thermal power station that mm. uses fuel. And you see, now the fuel costs have really gone high. Yes. So definitely, with the fuel still going high, that cost of fuel and in your tariff or in your tariffs, mm. you'll find the fuel, the fuel, uh, the fuel part. So that one means that we are still generating the power we use here mm. on fuel. Me, I want to, I really wish the state corporations, like even the, K, uh, the, the KBC, mm. where you are, 
can you start by ensuring that you go green? Just ensure that the whole facility, even if it cannot go the whole solar, but a part of it, a chunk of maybe 40 or 50 percent of your power mm -hmm. is gotten directly from the sun. Mm -hmm. Then the rest of it is gotten directly from the, from the uh, grid. Mm -hmm. With that one, we will now reduce the amount of power we take from the grid, and I'm very sure Kenya Power will now uh, shut down that's, those uh, those thermal. I, I think those that's, thermal. that's an idea that we'll probably <laughs> pro propose to the MB. <laughs> if he's watching, if we can go green or yeah. use uh, solar energy, well and good, why not? Exactly. But uh, le let me come to you, uh, Peter. How did the elections affect, you know, the, the, the lending rates and even the uptake of credit from different institutions? For example, where you work? Well, uh, the election cycle of our country <clears throat> Is, is usually it, 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 it goes down every five years. Yes. And uh, what I mean by that is uh, most uh, business people mm. and investors shy away from investing in our country within that period, electioneering period. Mm. If, uh, for example, you go to, like most of our customers are SMEs, MSMEs, uh, very few of them are importing goods. Very few of them are stocking up. Just because of that unforeseen, unpredictable electioneering period. Yes. So uh, when we import less, when we stock up less, when we le do less trade, even the government collects less money. Uh, we lend to fewer customers, mm. and uh, I, by extension, less money circulates within the economy. Mm. Or, or, or if you look at the trade. Uh, the uh, uh, amounts or the amounts involved in trade they are substantially very low and uh, my my request and my proposal is that we need to come up with a solution which can uh, ensure that this constant flow of business activities mm. we need to avoid a situation whereby people think that our elections are very un unpredictable or they'll turn violent yeah or people will lose their stock or their goods or the investments during mm. the election Bef period. Before you came in, the yes. two gentlemen said that uh, the only problem that SMEs or Kenyans in general suffer from is mm. the high number of guarantors. You know, mm. I also belong to a circle. I'll mm. not tell you, I, mm. I, I, if, I, maybe, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But then, yeah. the number of guarantors, for you to take a credit facility, mm -hmm. whether it's SME, you yes. know, I need to stock my, my business. Mm -hmm. I love to look for three, four, five people. Mm. For me to get facility, for mm. the facility, mm. can something be done generally as we speak, probably as a short-term measure, mm -hmm. to entice Kenyans to take more credit facility from this credit, uh, from from the circles, mm. uh, from the commercial institutions? Mm -hmm. Can something be done? Definitely, it can be done because I also belong to a circle, Kenya Banker Circle, and uh, for me to take a facility, mm. they will need guarantors. Uh, at the Jenga Credit, we don't ask for any guarantor. Let's start with mm. that. And that's why we are fortunate to get uh, more customers because we, our model is slightly different. Yeah. And uh, if you look at the new digital lending uh, act, the one that uh, CBK is trying to encourage, mm. they're encouraging a situation whereby a, a lender will not be call, calling guarantors. Mm. So that uh, by the end of the day, it is a person who, it is an individual who has borrowed who you should engage. And, uh, <coughs> well, for, for that model to be feasible, we need to encourage maybe the aspect of uh, uh, providing security so that uh, your security can act as a guarantor. Mm. But uh, it will be a, an, an uphill task, especially for the uh, micro, small organizations, mm. because very few, very few of them have that uh, capability of owning a security, maybe a title deed or logbook. And some of them are not even employed because yeah. the, the the third the, the the other option is to borrow against you or get a guarantee from your employer, mm. <coughs> and your employer will not also be called mm. to tell to say that you are not paying or something unfortunate is happening mm. in terms of your yeah, mm. uh, pay, pay, payment system. Mm. Yes, yes. All right, Rufus. Uh, j just before I come to you, Victor, the government uh, uh, um, released 3.6 billion shillings subsidy for the fertilizer. Yes. So let me just ask you, why, why give 3.6 billion shillings subsidy? Why not just cash transfer? Um, 
the biggest contributor to our inflation right now is our uh, food prices. Yes. Second after food prices is our uh, fuel. Mm -hmm. So the food prices are not imported. We a majority of the food we consume is uh, something that we actually produce. Mm. So it's a supply side problem. So when we fix supply, when there is a uh, sufficient food uh, we, uh, flowing within the country, mm. then food prices will definitely go down. Mm -hmm. So by subsidizing for fertilizer. The government is trying to stimulate production. So once it's on down the line, we will have food. And when we have food, then prices go down. Yes. And the pressure on the common monarchy will be a little bit lower. Okay. Yes. So that's, that's the whole essence of having the subsidy on... on uh, but is it sustainable at the end of the day? Or is it just uh, um, a, a precautionary measure? Short term, and then after we are uh, stable enough as a country, then it will be uh, lifted? Uh, from... Uh, uh, I'd like to quote David D, mm. uh, who is the chief economic strategist for the new administration. So uh, he mentioned that uh, they're looking to like subsidize or provide finance to the agricultural producers. But then right now the government doesn't have money. Mm. So it will take some time before they have money. So as a precautionary stage, this, uh, instead of giving money to the farmers, which they don't have, First of all, they subsidize the fertilizer mm. and uh, stimulate production for the next one season. By then, they have implemented structures through the new Ministry of the Cooperatives and SMEs to make sure that there is a way to finance the agricultural industry without them having to pay high interest rates to the commercial banks. Yes. So he mentioned that uh, even the big, big economies, they don't let the agricultural industry depend on the commercial sec uh, bank sector mm. because the loans can be quite expensive and they will eat into their returns. Mm. So they want to really strengthen the agriculture, which is the base of our economy. Mm. Yes. Okay. Victor? Uh, I, I have something to say on uh, what uh, the CEO talked about, mm. sus sustainability on the economy. Uh, what I want to say is, Vic, you cannot sustain economy when you are a consumer. You must be either a producer or a manufacturer. And therefore, this government must just come up with initiatives to ensure that we become a manufacturing uh, country. If we just say that we are going to be producers, we buy everything, 95% we import, then on sustainability of economy, we will not really achieve. So the first thing, actually, currently, it is only flowers and also magadi soda, those two, that is earning us uh, revenues externally. Mm. Only those two. But look at how much we import. It's almost 98%. So for us to really have a sustainable economy, then this government with President Uhuru, I mean President Ruto, they must have to really sit down and formulate yeah. how we are going to have serious manufacturing companies, serious manufacturing industries, and that will only be possible when they really have total control of oil. Why? You see, like, a uh, scrap metal will be taken from Turkana, mm -hmm. then it will be shipped to Mombasa, uh, from Mombasa to China to go and be remolded back to plate and then be shipped again to Kenya. Mm. When you realize that that oil cost is still cheaper than someone who could, could have done the, the same, same job here in Kenya. That is because the one, the uh, fuel in China is a bit low. So you can do all your manufacturing mm -hmm. industries in China, ship the goods all the way from China, and still beat the prices of Kenyans here. Mm. So the president really has to work on the economy of manufacturing. We have to be producers, we have to be manufacturers, yeah. and anything that will ensure that we produce goods at a lower rate than the imported goods, so that we also okay. earn revenues okay. from. Okay, from, from see, that. how long will Kenyans should we wait for us to start feeling some kind of, uh, you know, some reprieve? Well, uh, that one uh, is a very. <laughs> it will depend so <laughs> much on the new. Yes. Yeah, it will depend on the team that is uh, uh, the president is consulting. Mm. Because, uh, what, like what my colleague has said, it's uh, very true, and it's a fact that our balance of trade is off. And uh, that's why I think uh, that's why the Minister of Education mm -hmm. came up with a new curriculum for education, the CBC. Mm. 
uh, if you look at the developed uh, states like Singapore, Taiwan, Malaysia, and even China, what has made them to be producers and manufacturers and uh, industrialists mm. is ensuring that at least everybody knows their skill. If you go to China, there are so many cottage inter industries at uh, various homes. Mm. Be because uh, like most of the items we import, the small items for children, the small watches, mm -hmm. electronic items, those, most of them are manufactured from cottage industries, from homes. And that's why you find uh, China is able to export a lot. And that is a model maybe uh, informed the Ministry of, of Education to develop the CBC mm. curriculum so that if we can come up with a manufacturing state and export a lot to offset our balance of trade, which is geared towards more import yeah. than export. We only export coffee, fl a few flowers, and uh, some tea. Mm. Then on the, uh, the subsidy, the subsidy, my personal view, we need to consult wider because now, if for example, you only give subsidy for maize, what happens to the plight of that uh, farmer in Northeastern mm. who does cows? Or somebody in Mombasa who only does fishing? Mm. Yeah. How will they benefit? And uh, then another challenge that uh, will come about uh, from that subsidy is uh, if you look, if I think uh, the Ministry of uh, Meteor Meteorological Department yesterday gave a <coughs> issued a cautionary statement mm. on uh, the probability of rains failing. Yeah. So you can imagine we've pumped in four billion into the soil for a crop that won't get rid. Mm. That's busy. We are staring at a situation whereby we don't have uh, funds to spend. Then we've spent four billion, which has gotten lost. Mm. So the, the Kenya Kwanzaa consultant needs to consult widely. We are available to offer free consultancy mm -hmm. and uh, give them better advice, better strategies, so they can. Uh, ensure that we all succeed yeah yeah we don't uh, do single-handed decisions mm. that will plunge everybody into but si into but simply speaking ceo uh, yes. do kenyans have some some sense of hope yeah kenyans uh, we are very res kenyans are resilient mm. hopeful and i believe we, that uh, we mutate we, we can adopt any situation yes. pretty fast <laughs> very fast <laughs> yes and uh, i believe uh, for those of them who are listening to us, mm. they will consult widely because uh, if you look at Northeastern, it is now in dire need of even the three billion they are yeah. putting in farm fertilizer yes. than even uh, taking to that billion to fertilizer. Mm. I think they should even do bore boreholes faster in Northeastern to okay. save the situation. Yes. Depends with the water level there. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. Just before, th there's, a, there's, a, there's a statement that uh, actually is on the front page of the standard, mm -hmm. which was um, this. From, from, the C, from the CBK boss, mm -hmm. uh, he said, and let me quote, I want to assure you that we have adequate foreign exchange, all right? Mm -hmm. And what was happening is that in the past two to three months, we had people who were trying to bring us back to Goldenberg. That is one. Two, Central Bank of Kenya governor told MPs that a Goldenberg-like scheme was hatched by some rogue banks during the heated political season that led to shillings slumped to historic laws so it's not about the dollar it's about some few individuals who is going to cater for this coming to you Rufus um, I think it's not confirmed uh, what he mean, meant is that uh, we almost got there mm -hmm. so uh, uh, Goldenberg it's basically an allegation that uh, there was pressure to print more Kenya shillings mm. yeah so um, looking at that um, if there was a, an actual pressure and these are um, a speculation. Yeah. Uh, then that was a bad, bad policy mm. uh, because it basically devalues the value of the labor within the economy. Mm -hmm. So, um, if it actually happened, then that was bad. Maybe it was the one causing mm. uh, the dif di difference between the central bank rate and the banks that you'd find on the streets. Mm. Uh, you are doing 125 shillings to the dollar, mm. but then if you check online on the CBK rates was uh, somewhere around 119, 120. Mm. So that huge difference uh, may have had uh, a hit from, as a result of that. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Victor? Yeah, I wanted to talk about the uh, fertilizer subsidy, mm. the 3.6 billion, just as he said. It will be of no use for you to pump in 3.6 billion shillings on a dry land. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> you, you understand that exactly. you have 3.6 billion on fertilizers, then you dump it on a soil that is totally dry. Mm. It's totally not there. Actually, to me, I will really propose to the Kenya Kwanzaa government to really look at the irrigation. So it's a bit expensive because of the uh, of the of the KPLC, mm. but we really need to look at the model of even if it is also uh, subsidizing the cost of solar, so that those who want to do irrigation. Yesterday I was in Makweni, mm. Nkima. I found a number of actually I went to do a survey there for solar installation for water pump. What where we are going to in the next five years? I think irrigation will be taking the chunk of our of our agriculture. I just want to wish that this Kenya Kwanzaa government also comes in and assists the farmers to either design or come in ways where they can install solar to do the irrigation. Large farms, large areas of this country is totally dry. So we will pump in too much fertilizers on a dry land that will yield us nothing. I was in Wajia uh, early this year, and actually we install a solar that is only used to grow grass. Mm. No, maybe uh, some areas there's too much grass, but in Wajia, there are some guys who are only growing grass for their for their uh, animals, mm -hmm. and they are only growing grass using the using 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 the irrigation. So, if we can really come up with uh, modalities where we can assist farmers to go green in irrigation, so that we have huge farms on irrigation and powered by solar, then this 3.6 billion subsidy on fertilizer will have a meaning. Mm. But at the moment where we have 3.6 billion shillings with no rain or with less rains, then you are going to pump in so much money into the soil, but with very little, with okay. very little output. All right. I'm yeah. told we are coming to an end, but let me just read your comment here. There's a gentleman who asked a question. He's called Stephen Mwangi. Stephen said that I'm watching. I now know that subsidy isn't a permanent solution to the high cost of living. These economies need to be given a chance to advise government for smooth running of economy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is Stephen. Then uh, Kipiegon Tumui Singh Isaiah says that, can you ask them to explain on how to revocate on election? Um, how to revocate on election? Uh, Rufus? Um, I don't quite get it. I, I, I don't get it. Uh, tell him to explain how to revocate on election. Um, I don't know. Probably we'll start to move from election and just have to stabilize in terms of economy and stabilize uh, the, the economic aspect. But coming to you as CEO, mm -hmm. when we have a number of you know commercial institutions, commercial banks in Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, the same question I think I asked: Are we able to sustain ourselves without mm -hmm. having international debt borrowing? Or yes. to what rate? Uh, definitely yes. Mm -hmm. Although, to some extent, it should be the, 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 the funds that commercial banks have yes. should be geared or should be lent to the population, to their businesses. Mm. Because once the government competes with the public to borrow from the same commercial banks, mm. uh, commercial banks will tend to deal with the government more because it's safer mm. as opposed to lending the money to the MSMEs. Mm. Yes. So, uh, Rufus, probably that will be like your closing remarks. Mm. The issue of lending and borrowing, how can this be rationalized? So that at the end of the day, the lender and the borrower, all of them are at, at the same page. I know that would have gone to, to the CEO because yes. <laughs> it's more directly to that, but you can as well speak it anyway. Yes. So, uh, currently, the government doesn't have a lot of uh, money mm. to stimulate lending. Uh, I think the best way or our best chance of uh, getting out of this economic slum mm. is getting foreign direct investments. So if you get foreign di direct investments, uh, especially in financing, yeah. this would uh, drive uh, uh, excess supply of finance within the economy mm. and people would be able to get longer term financing um, that is more sustainable at lower rates. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the direction we need to take as a country. Yes. Yes. Victor, in terms of energy? Yeah, I have some... It affects make, all of us here. Yeah, it, I have some three issues here. Mm -hmm. One, on the issue of subsidy, I really wish the government to give more subsidy on diesel. Mm -hmm. Actually, we can remove the subsidy on petrol mm -hmm. because petrol are used by CEOs and you. But <laughs> the, the diesel... Oh, you no, see, oh, no, no, let me tell you, Vic, <laughs> yes. diesel is used by uh, tractors, the heavy engines. Mm. So if you are a hustler and you want to go to job from maybe uh, 
uh, is Lee to town every day, mm. you must use those buses. Those buses actually use diesel. Yeah. If you want to move to up country using a bus, you'll definitely use diesel. Mm. So to me, I would really wish the, uh, the president to really look at the subsidy on diesel. Let us remove some taxes on diesel okay. so that we can have that uh, prices stuck at 120 shillings. Mm. Two, the government should really also of, uh, really look at the technology transfer so that we don't be importers each, uh, for, for, for decades. Mm. You see, China did technology transfer from uh, European countries and now they are producers, they are yeah. manufacturers. This time, let us also look at how can we trans, uh, transfer technology from China, from other regions, so that we also start our manufacturing companies locally mm. here in Kenya. Then the third thing maybe is a request or a proposal the, on energy, on fuel. There are some, uh, the Fangano and uh, Migingo, they're really finding it hard at the moment because there's no electricity. Actually, mm. they are running thermal power mm. 24 hours. I know they are doing the fishing business, mm -hmm. which also needs to be cooled. Mm. It is my sincere request to the government that they can do a sub uh, undersea. You see, we have is around 20 kilometers for Migingo and around six kilometers for Mfangano, mm. so that we have undersea high power or high voltage cable, so that those two islands can have grid. Yeah. When they have grid, actually, then you'll realize that they will be doing more business mm. at a lesser cost. At the moment. The fuel, actually, they are selling even more. Better they are selling fuel 10 shillings more. Like now it is 180, better it is now 190. So the moment it crosses over to um, Fangano, then the fuel yeah, will be 220. So I think that right. is my request. Thank you so morning. much, gentlemen. Oh. Um, because we are running out of time. CEO, let me just ask you. The central bank regulated only gave license to 10 uh, mobile banking apps. Mm -hmm. uh, do you support that? Because yes. some of them are saying that they were not regulated. Well, uh, regulation, uh, to start with, the regulation is, is very healthy. Yeah. And uh, the main aim for CBK uh, coming into, 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 into that line mm. is because there is, a finance, there is a finance bill that was enacted by parliament. Yes. And they, they are hands are tied. It's the MPs and for the, of, the, of the last uh, house that uh, yeah. passed it, mm. and it was uh, assented to by the president. Mm. So ideally, the, the, unless uh, if they don't want to be regulated, or rather if you don't want to be regulated, mm. uh, we need to go back to parliament and make a few amendments. Okay. Yes. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Yeah. Absolutely. We've just... Uh, time flew so fast. <laughs> time flew so fast. <laughs> We're talking to... Uh, Peter Mashari is the CEO of Jijenga Credit Limited, Rufus Masharia, who is Kamau, sorry, lead markets analyst at FX Pesa, and Victor Akuna, who is an engineer uh, specializing on energy. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming. And of course, we've been talking about matters, economy, and how we can just recover post-election. That is all we had time for now. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Victor. Have a good morning.